What is up, Omnibus Collectors? It's Riley here, and today I am talking about my top 10 most wanted Punisher Omnibus editions. So I hope you're ready to deep dive into some Punisher material. Now, I want to make a couple of notes first. Number one, this is probably going to be a pretty long video, so if you want to watch this at 1.5 or 2 times speed, I am not offended. I do it all the time to watch longer videos. I uh, just want to say that here because it's probably going to be close to a 40 minute video depending on how I edit it. Um, so we'll see. Number two, this is my top 10. This is not a general top 10. This is my top 10 Punisher Omnis that I would like to see published. And in that, I did not want to talk about anything that I haven't read or am familiar with. So I want to take a moment here to admit to anyone that watches that I'm not talking about anything before the 1995 Punisher series. Um, I'm not familiar with all of the stuff before that. Uh, the first miniseries, the first ongoing series, the original volumes of War Journal and Warzone. I haven't read all that stuff. I've read bits and pieces here and there, but not enough that I'd feel comfortable in making uh, maps and stuff on potential omnibus for that material. Now, I'm not saying that I haven't read it because I don't want to read it. It is stuff that I am interested in diving into, and I do have plenty of classic Punisher collections on my shelf that I need to read. Uh, I just wanted to mention it here because I know if I didn't, that people in the comments would start popping up and saying, hey, why didn't you talk about anything from Baron or Dixon or any other creators like that that worked on the uh, classic material? So with that out of the way, let's jump on in. These are my picks for the 10 most wanted Punisher Omnibus Editions. Now coming in at number 10 is the only team book and the only non-Punisher title that I have on this list, and that is the Red Thunderbolts series. Now, I'm not gonna talk a lot about what the Thunderbolts typically are, but just mentioning here, this title was Thunderbolts in name only. It did not act like a Thunderbolts title that anyone was familiar with. They only used it because the leader of this team was General Thunderbolt Ross as the Red Hulk. Essentially, Ross, brings together a group of various characters, including Deadpool, Elektra, eventually the Ghost Rider comes in here, uh, Agent Venom, and of course, Punisher. Now, the series ran for 32 issues total, and along that time we had various writers. The first 10 issues, I believe, are written by Dan Way, and he doesn't do a great job writing the beginning of the series, but whenever the second writer, Charles Soule, comes on, he does a fantastic job of setting up some new plot lines and showing that he has generally good voice for these characters. In particular, he did a single issue, which is the cover of the second volume, that featured Frank Castle with artwork by Steve Dillon that was absolutely fantastic. It was such a good story that showed me that Soul had a really good idea of how to write the Punisher and how to write these other characters. It made me excited for the run going forward, which was great considering I was not very into it while Way was on there. Uh, the series would continue by Charles Soul for a little while, and that was volume three. Here's volume four, and then volume five sees Soul leave for the final arc by Ben Acker and Ben Blacker, the Punisher versus the Thunderbolts. So we get to see Frank Castle decide that his team, the Thunderbolts, need to be punished. It's not a A-plus series in any way, and it's one that I really doubt that Marvel's ever actually going to collect, but I wanted to put it out there because it does have some really good Punisher moments. Now, if we ever get this collection as an omnibus, I would imagine it would be far down the line after they've omnibized uh, all of the rest of Thunderbolts before it, but who knows? You never know what's going to happen. Sometimes you get big surprise books. If you're a fan of The Punisher, I recommend at least checking out, I think it's issue 11 or 12 is the Charles Soule single issue that focuses on The Punisher, and then uh, if you like that, read forward from there. Number nine is Punisher by John Ostrander. Now this one's interesting on the list here because this is the only stuff that has not been collected in any format. I don't have any of the issues. I think there's one issue of this run that ties into Onslaught that, that gets collected with the Onslaught collections, but otherwise, that's all we got. There was a kind of a crossover event in the Marvel Universe called Double Edge, and this saw the Punisher brainwashed to go kill Nick Fury. So there are several issues of stories that lead up to this run on the Punisher, and that stuff's not written by John Ostrander, but 
to round out this book and kind of give the background of why the Punisher is in the situation that he's in, I figured it'd be a good idea to include all of this. So this book would include Double Edge Alpha, Double Edge Omega, and then there were four issues that happened in between this that were part of this storyline. Uh, Daredevil 344, Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, I think issue 81, Ghost Rider 65, and Incredible Hulk 433, and then this leads into the 18-issue run by John Ostrander. Essentially, uh, at the beginning of the Ostrander run, the Punisher is on death's row, about to be killed because he murdered Nick Fury, which we find out, this is from 1995, so it's old spoilers, but we find out that that was a, an LMD, it wasn't real, really Nick Fury, but he gets taken out by a, uh, a group of mobsters and basically becomes a mafia enforcer so it's a really different direction for a punisher book uh that ends in a really weird place it's not the most praised run but it is one that i had a lot of fun with when i read it and again it's not collected anywhere so it's something that i know a lot of collectors would appreciate and a lot of punisher fans would appreciate to see it just collected in some format. So this is on my list for most wanted omnibus editions, but not necessarily needing to be an omnibus. If they at least released a paperback edition, then I would be happy with that just to see something that's never been collected before finally collected. Number eight is Punisher War Journal by Matt Fraction. So this is the Punisher series that actually followed uh, Civil War and happened around that time. So one of the interesting things that this run is really well known for is that Fraction uh, has the Punisher briefly take on the role of Captain America, and he has his own Captain America costume that he uses during that time. So this is kind of before Bucky takes on the role for the next several years. Uh, the series kind of highlights a bunch of different story arcs where the Punisher is facing off against some of his major villains, and it has some really nice artwork uh, in there from Ariel Olivetti. As well, it does have the first story that Rick Remender wrote with the Punisher as he co-wrote the final arc of the series, which would eventually lead towards Remender becoming the writer on the ongoing Punisher series uh, that came out of Dark Reign and eventually went into the whole Frankencastle stuff, which we do have an omnibus of. Matt Fraction, at this point, was not as well-known as he is now. He didn't have the, the big uh, career-defining runs that he has had on stuff like Iron Man and, uh, and Hawkeye, but he did a pretty good job of giving us a Punisher series during a time that the only other place we had the character was over on the Marvel Max series, so he hadn't had his own in-continuity 616 series for a minute. Number seven. Punisher by Becky Cloonan. Now this is one that I know a lot of people weren't big fans of, and I thought it was a pretty decent series. It has some good action and some nice artwork from Steve Dillon, who actually gives the, I believe this is the final published art of his career before he passed. Um, but I really got a bigger appreciation for this series after it ended because I had read Becky Cloonan talking about what her concept was. And basically her idea was making the character into kind of like a slasher movie monster, like a Michael Myers or something, who instead of lurking in the shadows and hunting down teenagers, she sees him has, as this slasher monster who's hunting down criminals and mobsters and stuff like that. So it's a really fun little take. I don't know if fun's the right word, but it's a good take on the character, and I really did enjoy what she did. It's not that long of a series either. It only lasts uh, in itself 17 issues, but to pad it out, uh, if they wanted to, they could make this omnibus not just about Becky Cloonan's run itself, but kind of an omnibus for the Punisher of that era. So it could also uh, possibly include uh, Daredevil Punisher 7th Circle miniseries by Charles Soule, uh, and maybe the Doctor Strange Punisher Magic Bullets miniseries, uh, which was written by John Barber, and then maybe even the Deadpool vs. Punisher miniseries that was written by Fred Van Lenti. So that would kind of double this book in size, making it a pretty decent sized omnibus, and also give some of those miniseries a place to exist uh, outside of just the paperback editions. Either way, if you haven't read this run, I recommend it. It's uh, it's some pretty solid stuff. I, re I really enjoyed it myself. It has some good action, it has a good take on the character, and it has some great artwork from the late Steve Dillon, and as well from Matt Horak, who does his best job to kind of emulate Dillon's style. So when Dillon is gone, it doesn't 
become that jarring, I guess. Number six, Marvel Knights Punisher Companion Omnibus. Now, I didn't think of a better name for this, but it makes sense for what it is. Essentially, this would be everything from the Marvel Knights era of the Punisher that was not collected in the Garth Ennis Omnibus. The Ennis Omnibus collects the 12-issue series plus everything he wrote on the following ongoing series from 2001, and then it also has a couple of extra things that he wrote for the Punisher. So almost all of his Marvel Knights related Punisher work. That said, it would be the first place that we could see an oversized version of his Warzone miniseries, which unfortunately didn't make it into the Omnibus because that miniseries was published about a year after the Omnibus was released. I did hope that Marvel would consider adding it when they did the second printing somewhat recently, but they decided to keep the contents of that Omnibus the same as the original printing. So aside from including that Warzone miniseries, this would also include the Purgatory miniseries, which is the first Marvel Knights Punisher related material. It's a four issue miniseries uh, written by Chris Golden, as well as the Tom Payer issues of the ongoing Marvel Knights Punisher series that happened in between some of uh, Garth Ennis's issues. This is issues 8 through 12 of the 2001 series. As well as that, we have the Punisher vs. Bullseye by Dan Way and Steve Dillon miniseries, and then a bunch of other miniseries including Punisher, uh, or Wolverine Punisher 1 through 5, Wolverine Punisher Revelation 1 through 4, uh, Daredevil vs. Punisher Ends and Means 1 through 5, I believe that one is by David Lapham. Um, and then a bunch of different one-shots would be in there as well. Red Xmas, Bloody Valentine, Silent Night, Xmas Special, Spider-Man vs. Punisher, and some material from the Marvel Knights Double Shot number 4. Now, all of that adds up to 39 issues, which makes a pretty decent-sized omnibus. As well, there was a Marvel Knights 15-issue ongoing series written by Chuck Dixon, um, which could be collected in here, but I haven't read that material, so I don't know how much that he was featured in uh, in that series myself, so that's why I don't add it to the map myself. But if it makes sense, if someone thinks that it should go in there, uh, that would bring the total issue count of that volume to 54 issues. Now this brings us to number five, so we're in the uh, latter half of the list now, and number five is The Punisher by Nathan Edmondson. Now this is the Marvel Now era Punisher book, and at that time Nathan Edmondson is actually getting a lot of work over at Marvel. He did the Black Widow series that had a little bit of a crossover with The Punisher uh, as well. He had the Red Wolf series, I think it was a mini series, and a couple of other things here and there, but uh, there were some allegations that came out about Edmondson, and very soon thereafter, he wound up getting taken off of his books and not asked to come back on a lot of the different titles. I'm not mentioning that here to uh, get into any sort of debate on it, but I do believe that as a content creator and as someone talking about comics, I need to mention that in the same breath that I mentioned talking about and praising the quality of this guy's writing. So, in my opinion, he did a really great run on the Punisher, and it had some really amazing artwork from Mitch Jarrods, who eventually would go on to work with Tom King on several things. Um, there's a lot of really great imagery and iconography that comes out of this run. Um, it was collected across three volumes, that first one black and white, the second one border crossing, and the final one was titled Last Days, uh, because it led right into the Secret Wars uh, miniseries where the Marvel Universe kind of relaunched a little bit. Um, so it does kind of end abruptly, but overall I think that it's a really fun series. It's a really good run on the Punisher. I really liked Edmondson's take on the character, and it has really, really good uh, artwork throughout. So unfortunately that run is getting really hard to find. At least that first volume, Black and White, uh, is going for pretty decent prices online. And due to the allegations on Edmondson, I don't believe that there's a chance this one's going to get collected in any other format. It's not impossible, but Edmondson's pretty much been completely out of work from the major publishers for several years since that happened. Um, so I would be extremely surprised, uh, especially in the current climate, to see his work be highlighted in an omnibus. Um, another factor pointing to that is that they've decided not to re-release his Black Widow work in any sort of larger paperback or any format like that. Um, 
during the marketing window for the Black Widow movie. They've pretty much re-released every other Black Widow material except his, and at least one of those volumes of Black Widow is going out of print. So again, um, while I really enjoy this book, it kind of goes a little lower on the list because of the fact that I don't think it's something that's ever going to be happening from Marvel. Number four, Punisher slash Fury Max by Garth Ennis. Now, I don't have a really great or clever title for this one either, uh, but essentially this is the Punisher Max related material when Garth Ennis comes back. Um, and I included the Fury material here to kind of pad this volume out a little bit, um, but essentially he has since his days on the Punisher Max series, he's done a couple more Punisher Max related miniseries. The first one was the Platoon, and then there's the more recent Punisher Soviet, which has not had a uh, paperback released just yet. It's coming out pretty soon. Um, but to pad this out, I figured that they could also add in his Fury work because the earlier stuff is really hard to find. The paperbacks are extremely expensive and out of print. Uh, so it could possibly include in total his Fury 1 through 6, Fury Peacemaker 1 through 6, Fury My War Gone By, which is the later Fury series he did, issues 1 through 13, uh, as well as the Punisher Platoon and Punisher Soviet issues 1 through 6 of each. Now, alternatively, his Fury stuff could go in its own collection. That's a good 24 issues worth of material that could exist on its own. Um, and they could just do the Punisher work in its own oversized edition. Um, but I think that if that's the route they're going to take, we'll probably wait. And that's kind of why this one falls uh, at number four, and it's not any higher. Not not to say that the content is not as good as the following things that I'm going to mention, but just the fact that he's still working on this material. He's mentioned that he's not done. He does have more Punisher-related material from this era, kind of this uh, look at the Punisher before he became the Punisher. If I was to do this same list in a couple of years, this probably wouldn't be the same content. I'd probably say Platoon, Soviet, and then another miniseries um, of the Punisher at another point in history. So I don't know. I don't know what his plans are for the future, but the material is all very good and definitely warrants having some sort of prestige format edition. So on that, I would say that's why it makes it on this list. And if you haven't read that material yet, I highly recommend it. Uh, the Platoon is still in print, easy to find. That 13 issue Fury series, My War Gone By is also pretty easy to find. It has an oversized hardcover. That's really nice. And uh, on top of that, Soviet will be coming out in a paperback soon. So definitely check that stuff out and join me in hoping that it'll eventually get an uh, omnibus or oversized edition. Number three is the most recent Punisher material that's uh, on this list, and that is The Punisher by Matthew Rosenberg. Now, Rosenberg's run was really highlighted by the fact that at the beginning, he gave The Punisher the War Machine armor. And that's something that even outside of the comics has made ripples um, in collectors of toys and stuff. They've had a Marvel Legends uh, Punisher War Machine figure. They have had the uh, Marvel Legends also released a helmet, the War Machine helmet with the Punisher paint on the face. So people really enjoyed this idea of the Punisher getting to use the War Machine armor. And it's something that kind of makes sense. You know, he he gets the ultimate weapon in the Marvel Universe or you know, the ultimate weapon if you're talking about firearms and stuff like that. But aside from the gimmick of Frank stealing and wearing and using the War Machine armor for the first uh almost half of this series, it's all around a really good, solid run. I think that Matthew Rosenberg has a really good take on who the Punisher is and kind of what his ideology is and especially how it relates to others in the world. Um, now, he had two runs on the Punisher. This first one was that War Machine run, which is collected right now across two paperbacks. The first one um, and second one both titled just Punisher War Machine. And then the second run is collected in three paperbacks. This is uh, kind of a return to more of the standard street level type stuff, uh, but he gets to deal with a much larger profile villain in Baron Zemo, who becomes a major antagonist during this run. Uh, and that ends with three volumes. So in total, his first run was 12 issues. The second run uh, was 15. So it makes for a pretty decent sized omnibus. If you're a fan of the character and you have not read this run on Punisher, I do recommend it. I think all five volumes are still pretty 
easily uh, obtainable out there. Uh, but it's some really, really fun, really entertaining material. This brings us to our top two. Number two on this list is Punisher Max Volume 3. Now we have the first two Punisher Max Omnibus Editions and that collects all of Garth Ennis's run. I believe 60 issues plus the Bourne miniseries and a few one shots, maybe with a couple of other things thrown in as well. But after that, there was still more Punisher Max material that happened between Ennis's run and Aaron's run. The main chunk of material that would fall into this book would be this stuff uh, from the sixth Punisher Max oversized edition. This has arcs by Dwayne Swarzynski, Victor Gishler, and Greg Hurwitz, uh, and consists of issues 61 through 75 of the ongoing Max series before it ended and wound up starting up the Jason Aaron ongoing Max series. Um, now, addition to this, it would also have the annual and a bunch of one shots that were collected in the uh, Max Complete collections, including Force of Nature, Little Black Book, Xmas Special, Naked Kill, Get Castle, Butterfly Happy Ending, Hot Rods of Death, and Tiny Ugly World. And then finally, we would cap that off with the five issue Untold Tales of Punisher Max miniseries. This followed after uh, Jason Aaron's run. So this would be a little bit of a, a mishmash, if you will, of a bunch of different material, but it would be really cool to see because it basically completes collecting all of that additional Max related material into one place. Um, and there's some good stuff in there too. If you're a fan of the Punisher Max material by Ennis or by Aaron, if you haven't read Aaron, I highly recommend that. This is going to be something that you'd enjoy picking up. And that's kind of why it makes it so high on this list is all of that. Plus the fact that I believe this is something that they might actually wind up doing. Um, they've already sold well enough on the, the Max paperbacks and the Max Omnibus editions that this could make sense. And with that, we get to my number one pick, and I think at this point it's probably obvious for anyone who's watching this or who knows me and my opinions on comics and stuff, and that is The Punisher by Greg Rucka. Now, I don't have the collected editions. I did buy the entire series as it came out in single issues, uh, his 16-issue ongoing series plus the five-issue Warzone miniseries, which wrapped it all up. However, unfortunately, I sold all of those with the intents of buying the paperbacks or the hardcovers, and I just never picked them up, and now every single collection there's four collections that make up his run all four of them are just stupidly hard to find for a good price so i don't have them but it is a fantastic run that i think there's been some valiant efforts at doing punisher material since Rucka, rucka's run but no one has really matched that and if anything i feel like for me rucka is second as a punisher writer only to Ennis. And I say that, mind you, what I said at the beginning of the video, that I don't have the knowledge of those classic runs, but it, considering what material I know and what material I've read, to me, that's kind of where he's placed. And that's why his name gets so high on this list. He does such a great job of writing this silent, covert, focused version of The Punisher. And he's joined by such an amazing artist with Marco Cecchetto, which Cecchetto's artwork if you haven't seen it, is just fantastic. And he does such a amazing rendition of the Punisher himself. As well, together they give us a new character in uh, Rachel Cole Olives. She gives us this really nice alternate look at someone else who's taking the Punisher's mission to heart and making her own play on it. And it was something that I really loved and a lot of other people really loved as well. It, it was just a fantastic run in comics. And I think it's just amazingly surprising that all these years later it still hasn't received any sort of not just any sort of omnibus edition but even some sort of new collected edition given that the original ones were so out of print and hard to find now this would collect like i mentioned the 16 issue ongoing series plus the five issue warzone miniseries as well there's a small crossover between punisher avenging spider-man and daredevil so we'd see an issue each of avenging spider-man and daredevil thrown in there uh and as well during that time there was a miniseries that you could throw in there just to pad it out a little bit the trial of the punisher the trial of the punisher is collected in this punisher bullseye uh greatest hits or deadliest hits book um and it doesn't necessarily connect to what 
was being done in uh, the Greg Rucka book, but it was the kind of the bridge between Rucka and the Marvel Now era whenever Edmondson came in. So it'd be a decent place to throw that uh, miniseries. So that is my list for my top 10 most wanted Punisher omnibus editions. Thank you so much for watching this. If you have any sort of dissenting opinion or you agree or your list would be a little bit different, go ahead and comment down below and let me know what classic runs on The Punisher that I need to read. If I'm enjoying these things and talking about these runs of The Punisher, which classic ones are out there and what's collected that I should be checking out myself because I am interested. The Punisher is a character that I really enjoy. I think that he's used very fantastically in a lot of different series and I would love to read more stuff that I haven't read read from him. I also wanted to take a moment here to thank my Patreon patrons, Nick and Adonis. Thank you so much for uh, becoming patrons to the channel and helping me to do what I do here. If you would like to become a Patreon uh, member, you can go down to the link below I'm going to have in the description. Uh, there's a lot of cool benefits you can get from there. Uh, for instance, the guys who uh, recently became patrons got access to my notes for this video uh, long before I filmed it. So kind of a sneak peek at that. There's other exclusive video content like reviews and whatnot that'll be up there as well. So consider doing that if you wanted to support my channel. Every bit helps immensely. So thank you so much everyone again for watching. I'll have a lot of great content coming out soon. If you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel yet, please do so now. Hit that like button, comment down below, and share this with all your friends. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Peace out.